What up everyone, Reach here for Animal Wire, and you're probably thinking right now, what in God's green earth is a finger monkey? Well, if it's gotta be small enough to prop itself up on your finger, then we best be looking at the pygmy marmoset, as this species is no doubt the smallest monkey out there. But to clarify, images like these are mostly of infants, whereas adults are a bit bigger, but still pretty compact considering they're coming in under half a foot, not counting the tail. But don't you worry, we didn't forget the tail, it sure is one of the many adaptations for life in the trees. Yuck, the way these things scurry about, you might mistake them for a bunch of squirrels. Their hands and feet even look the same, and those claws, don't get me started, it's all about the claws, baby. Enabling them to masterfully navigate the many large vertical supports found in their domain. Not to mention an uncanny ability to rotate at the drop of a hat in a pinch on a dime. And if you didn't follow that string of idioms, keep up, keep up, keep up. Cause these little guys aren't slowing down for no one, not you, besides for this one I guess, which is great. Cause now we have a good glimpse of that beautiful Chewbacca face. Look at him rotate his head around all like he's the prettiest marmoset in the forest, and with good reason. He's working with 180 degrees of motion here and that's to each side. Which is very important when everything from snakes to eagles to jungle cats are gunning for ya. But we're not on the lookout, what are these guys eating themselves? Funny you ask. They run on a specialized diet of gums and saps, which are substances that tend to only be secreted when a plant is damaged. So to start the harvesting process, they dig their freaky looking vampiric teeth into the tree's bark to carve out these almost perfectly round holes. And once in place, need only to be checked in on from time to time to collect that precious, precious ooze. Ooh, I could go for a glass of that right now. Now in the wild, they form close-knit family units composed of a single reproductive female, her mate, and all the subsequent litters of offspring they go on to produce. In addition to this, a member or two with no relation may even join up to play a supporting role, as it's the job of every able-bodied marmoset in the group to help out rearing the young. So yeah, this can be quite the chore considering the infants must be exclusively carried around in their first two weeks. And when a new set of twins are being popped out every six months, trust me, the pot of gold is empty at the end of this rainbow. Anyway, so, however, I think it's fair to say the social and nutritional needs of these animals are quite complex, which makes it all the more heartbreaking to see them become such a hot commodity in the exotic pet trade. I mean, yeah, who wouldn't want a little mini monkey friend, and I'm sure most people's intentions are pure, but the reality is we just can't even come close to recreating in an environment that would provide them with all the intricate nuances of excitement, wonder, stimulation, and fulfillment that comes with living in the wild among their own kind. So to anyone considering purchasing such an animal, I would highly advise against it. But maybe it interests you in a pet rock or perhaps a cactus. I hear cactuses are easy to take care of. Anyways, before I take off, let's thank Mr. One Directioner for recommending this awesome animal topic to speak on. With that being said, yo dude, sweet creature.